What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and we're back with some creations, uh, one of which I started in a stream but a couple other ones that I just kind of built after the fact because I thought they would be cool. And uh, this is the creation I built in a stream and it's a really big wheel, like, like a big wheel, like the trikes. And I had worked on it a bit in the stream and I came up with this pretty cool uh, four piston radial engine. So it's got two pistons per pairing just because it needed a lot of force. And, you know, this is a really cool engine just because it's an in-hub engine. And, you know, when we put this on the big wheel... Now, this is unedited from the stream. This is exactly how it finished off in the stream. It was just like this. But, you know, we're holding W and it just, you know, it moves the wheel. We can steer that wheel left and right. And uh, we can hit a switch there to go in reverse. And a lot of you guys were saying during the stream that I should make a piston unicycle. I thought about that and I'm like, that's, that's awesome. And so... I took this entire big wheel mechanism and I chopped it in half and I created the big wheel unicycle. So I had to create this massive stand uh, to build on top of it. So I had this big wheel suspended on it. And then we've got this unicycle body with the bunch of thrusters to make it self balancing and a WS converter. So we can hold W and it goes forward. And if we hold S, it'll reverse the engine and it'll go in reverse there. Perfect. And if we hold, you know, left and right, it would it would use the thrusters. And this seems very, you know, practical. You see, the thrusters are very powerful. There's a reason for that. So we got to try and get up on top of this. This is this is the difficult part. Okay. But, okay. No, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make it. Um, let's just put down some blocks. Yeah. No, nope, it's good. Oh, you gotta be really. This is the very difficult part about big creations. This is what I was saying before where, you know, Scrap Mechanic really needs a way to fly. Okay, here we go. This is good. Okay, so you can see the thrusters are really powerful. And a lot of you guys are going to say, well, con, you should have made your thrusters less powerful. Um, God dang it. I mean, all this is pointless. Okay, so I finally got on top of the unicycle. If we let it sit here, it doesn't really matter because it turns out when you put eight pistons on a radial engine, they have a lot of torque. And according to the laws of everything, um, you know, equal and opposite forces and reactions and stuff. So if we have a lot of torque at the wheel, it means that torque has to go somewhere, which means it goes into the top of this unicycle. Oh my God, this unicycle is terrible. But anyways, this creation is too big and the engine is too powerful. So when I activate forward, you can see the wheel will spin, but it's got so much torque, the body can't keep up. And I tried this with suspension glitches and everything else, but the reality is um, they don't activate fast enough to, to counteract the torque on these eight motors. And I'm sure you could put an infinite stabilizer in there and keep that all the way up all the time. Uh, but the reality is this radial engine is not very efficient. After the big wheel and after the unicycle, I decided to go into a smaller unicycle. And I will say though, I am going to use this radial engine for something. I do still have a plan for it. Not this one in particular. I'm going to rebuild it a little bit better. So uh, take your guesses and let me know what you think in the comments down below if you think you know what I'll be using that engine for. But uh, I do have a plan to use this radial engine again, the in-hub design, because I really do like that. But... Uh, Regardless, I did decide to finally actually build a piston-powered unicycle, and uh, I thought it would be really awesome. So over here, we've got uh, version 1, which does like to sway a bit. And uh, hold on, we just gotta... Sometimes it just doesn't want to start. Can we just... Can we... There we go. Thank you. So the pistons are at a little bit of an angle, which means it'll always spin forward. So you hold W, and then you've got A and D controls. That's pretty much it. There's no reverse, but I mean, you don't really need it. You can spin on the dime. It does use... Suspension glitches for turning and for stabilizing in all four directions, but uh, it just uses those two little pistons there It almost looks like little feet. So this one's version one, uh, you know, not very good I'm not gonna upload it or anything like that. It, it was it works. I mean it was a, sort of the proof of concept But uh, you can see it sways a lot and it's not very stable. So I did eventually work on version two and this is the one I will upload to the workshop. Obviously, very wide and, uh, you know, it is slightly offset. The one arm is slightly wider than the other. But it's a, uh, a piston-powered unicycle. And uh, hold on there. Sometimes it... Uh, nope. Come on. Stop being stupid. There we go. Nope. Nope. Come on. Sometimes it doesn't like to get going. And then sometimes... Really? Can we just... Can we just... Come on. Oh, my goodness. There we go. 
Yeah, so it, it'll always spin forwards, but sometimes it gets stuck in that neutral position. I mean, I could probably adjust the angle a little bit more and guarantee that it'll always spin forwards, but uh, it is very quick. And uh, I did use the mod pack, as you can see, just for that one 7x2 wheel. The rest of it's completely vanilla, but uh, I will be uploading it with the mod pack requirement and that one 7x2 wheel. And I'm sure if you use some, you know, glitches and stuff, you could make the pistons a lot closer so it looks even more like a person pedaling. But I thought it was just hilarious because with some suspension glitches, it's powerful enough to offset the force of two pistons. And so you get this sort of, you know, piston powered unicycle. And it is, in fact, using those two sensors on the sides to uh, determine when to activate the pistons. That's why it's got those four sections of concrete blocks. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Perfect. But yeah, it's, it's a lovely, speedy little vehicle. And uh, it definitely, definitely works a little bit better than, uh, than the other piston-powered unicycle. And so I might, like, I'm not going to revisit the big piston-powered unicycle. The reality is that wheel is too clunky. It's too big. It's not smooth. You can see this wheel is nice and smooth. And uh, the pistons on that, that engine are just way too powerful. So you've got eight pistons, and when the wheel doesn't want to spin the uh the entire eight pistons put all the force into the into the cab and so unless you use like an infinite stabilizer you're not going to keep that cab up and if i lower the thruster power that cab will balance better but of course i needed higher thruster power to try and counteract the torque on the engine which didn't end up working anyways so if we look oh okay eventually it'll stop there we go come on come on you can do it okay so if we look, it's really simple. Um, you know, all we do when we, we first start out is this controller here rotates uh, 180 degrees to offset the two. So you can see there on the lift, they're spawned. Both pistons are in the up position. And then as soon as we start, that one rotates 180 degrees. So now they're offset. And then to guarantee the direction, you can see where the pistons are mounted. I just have that that bar at a slight angle. So both pistons are pushing forward into the wheel. So whichever piston is going to go on the first stroke, which will be this one because it's in the high point, you can see it has an angle that already wants it to push forward. And so that initial angle gives it that forward push. So if we increase this even more, let's say to 25 degrees, and uh, we increase it on the other side to 25 degrees as well, right? Now it should avoid that W conundrum where it gets stuck. But regardless, that's kind of how you guarantee the direction. And if you wanted to, you know, flip the direction, all you'd have to do is flip the encoders so the sensors read uh, the, the encoder plates differently, although they might be symmetrical. No, they're not symmetrical. So you'd have to have a symmetrical encoder plate or a different set of sensors. Um, or you could move the sensors. There's a few other ways to do it. And, and then you can just flip that and you'd reverse the direction, really. But that kind of guarantees the direction for this one, just to make it nice and compact and uh, and there's no reverse, but you know it allows it to move forward. So if we take a look at the piston unicycle, um, it's got some thrusters on just because of the thing, but if we look at it, the piston, the radial engine does the same thing. And so what's happening is with a radial engine, which is kind of a little bit different. Um, so what's happening is all the, all four sets of, oh, that doesn't help, but all four sets of pistons are attached to this one plus piece here. So these, these four white pieces are all actually connected and they are the piece that actually spins around the center axle, which is this, this yellow piece here. And so those four white pieces are all pushed at the same, by, by each of the four sets of pistons, depending on the position of this encoder, which sensor is activated when you turn on the engine. So if you take the engine and you run it, then you end up with this nice kind of action going around. But the problem with this, I find, is it's very clunky. If you watch the way the engine moves, um, it's not very smooth. You can see that center section is really kind of jerking around. That combined with the wooden tire really makes this kind of impossible to use. I mean, the, the wooden tire is just too much torque. And then to reverse it, all that happens is that center bar piece, which starts at 90 degrees, it gets flipped. So this piece right here, that initial bearing, offsets everything when you put this on a lift for the first time. So if we take this, it's going to spawn sideways now, which is good. So you put this on a lift, you can see the mechanism is centered and all the pistons are centered. But uh, as soon as this beam here rotates out 90 degrees, then the mechanism is off-centered, which allows the pistons to actually kind of be at an offset cycle. You can see there, so that rotates out and then everything moves. And then all we're doing when we reverse it is we're flipping that and then all the sensors with all this logic reverses the encoder position so the encoder spins backward. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, of course, about the piston unicycle and make sure you hit that like button and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, I love piston creations. They're really 
quite fun, and I find they always move in such a whimsical way. I mean, the unicycle, really, it almost looks like a pair of legs pedaling. And I'm sure someone could make one with, like, super long modded pistons that, you know, really looks like legs pedaling on the outside. But uh, it's definitely a cool little creation, and it's really fun to kind of just free float around the map. It's very quiet. Just kind of floats around without any engine noise. So it's kind of, you know, it's really hilarious. And I mean, it's not uh, very quick, obviously, but uh, definitely a lot of fun. So make sure you check it out on the workshop and uh, make sure you hit those buttons down below. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see y'all next time.